Hey everyone, so today I want to talk to you about the Doctor Who Christmas special of this year, The Doctor, The Widow and The Wardrobe. Um, my apologies that I didn't get around to doing this yesterday, Christmas Day itself. I didn't actually get to watch it until today, Boxing Day. Um, and I'll do my initial thoughts first and I'll do go through it sort of scene by scene and do a more in-depth analysis. Initial thoughts, I think the first half an hour was a drag and then the second half was really, really good. Very emotional. A lot happened. The fact that it was sort of a clone of Narnia. Well, kind of. There's Narnia elements in there. It wasn't exactly identical. The fact that it was a clone of Narnia there kind of annoyed me a little bit. I didn't mind the Christmas Carol last year, but I kind of want them to have original stories, not stories that take elements of other sort of classic stories and traditional stories. Didn't like that. I'm like, where's your originality? But if you've seen any of my sort of Series 6 reviews and some of my Series 5, you'll know that Doctor Who, in my opinion, is just lacking originality now. It's copying ideas from other places. It's recycling characters, recycling old stories and things. Um, and that is annoying me a little bit, but I'll not go into that too much. Right, so slightly more in-depth scene for scene. First of all, the introduction was very interesting with the Doctor flying through space. I thought that was bizarre. Um, I always love it when they're in space suits, but now space suits make me think of um, the finale of Series 6, whereas it used to make me think of the Satan Pit and things like that. But I do like the Doctor in a space suit. Um, the next thing that kind of got me a bit excited was the hammocks when he was the caretaker and they had the room and I did notice straight away, I was like, where are the beds in this place? Um, the hammocks though, when he jumped on the hammocks and he fell, this video will contain spoilers by the way, I should have said that at the beginning, this will contain spoilers if you haven't seen the actual episode. When he jumped on the hammocks and kind of fell, I just thought that's fantastic and it made me realise that the 10th Doctor couldn't really do what the 11th Doctor does, I think Matt has a lot more energy um, I'm not saying, I mean, David has impeccable levels of energy. He's just bounding around all over the place, all of the time. But as far as the Doctor goes, I think the 11th Doctor has a lot more energy and is a lot more hyperactive and is a lot more of a child. He's a lot more immature than what the 10th Doctor was, I think. I know it's the same character, but I think Matt brings greater elements of immaturity than what David's did. <laughs> Don't know what that says about the actors. Um, yeah, the, the box is weird. The fact that it's not a wardrobe I like because then they're not just basically copying Nar Narnia. The fact that it is a Christmas present and it was planned to be a special supervised trip to another world for the kids and the mother was a really good idea and I liked that and of course Cyril was going to go and have a peek. You could tell he's a very nosy child, very curious child and he knows a lot. Um, the fact that it was blue as well was nice. I was hoping it would have been Tardis blue but it was a couple of shades too light to be Tardis blue so they missed a, a bit of a trick there and um, you know creating the hole bigger on the inside than the outside with the Tardis blue. But never mind, I thought that was a very good idea. Um, and I also loved it when they kind of went through the Vox and you could see both worlds. That is like my, well when I was younger, that was my ultimate fantasy. To be able to open a bookshelf and go into another world. Or to be able to climb through a window and go into a different like a, a different dimension. That was like oh, my ultimate fantasy. I used to like pretend to draw plans for the house to have tunnels going through the walls and things. I was insane. But that was my ultimate dream when I was younger. To discover a hidden world. It never happened. Um... The big forest kind of, a lot of the middle of it was focusing on the forest and how extreme it was and how much of a big scale it was and how gorgeous it was supposed to look, you know, with all the white and sparkly things. I think after the first time you see it, I was a bit like, this is boring. It's, it's just a big forest with snow, really. Um, obviously, once we get further into it, we, we, we realise it's alive. But I think they focus too much on, you, you know, doing like pan shots and things on the actual forest. And I just didn't like that. Got a bit bored. Never mind, the fact that Bill Bailey is in this got me a little bit excited because he's hilarious. Granted he wasn't really playing a very funny character in this, which is a bit of a shame. I think that's a, an opportunity missed there. Um, but I thought it was quite nice. And obviously the big, the big issue here is the wooden people. And these wooden people, are they alive? Are they just statues? What's going on there? Um, they were, they're not scary. I think they could have been made a lot more scary. But wood scares me anyway. Um, it's because it's all textured and it's all cracking. And I've got this thing about... Oh, it's hard to describe, but the texture of those people was what was scary to me, not their actions. I wasn't really scared by their actions, I thought they were a bit two-dimensional. Um, they're not characters that are going to go down in Doctor Who history, definitely not, without a doubt. Also, um, what irritated me here as well was something the Doctor said, and I'm blaming Stephen Moffat because apparently, if I remember at the beginning, he wrote the script. He, the Doctor said, I've met the Forest of Cheam once, she fancied me. No, 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 you are wrong, Mr. Scriptwriter, who I'm going to say is Moffat, but I could be wrong. The Forest of Cheam is not a she. The Forest of Cheam is a they. They are a colony, they are a, they, well, in that particular episode, at the end of the world, end of the earth, end of the world, oh goodness. Anyway, 
And series one, the Forest of Cheam, is a collection of three people. Jabe fancied the Doctor. Jabe of the Forest of Cheam. So I was really annoyed, and I know it's me being really pedantic and being really picky there, but Jabe is one of my all-time favourite characters, so I was a bit like, no, she didn't. I've met the Forest of Cheam. One of them fancied me would have been the right way to say it. Or whatever, you know, change it completely. But I was th that to me, as an avid Series 1 and 2 fan, um, my knowledge of Series 3 kind of goes out the window a bit, but Series 1 and 2 I've watched until until Doomsday, ironically. Um, so I do know those a lot more than I do know, like 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and whatever. So I was like, please be a bit more accurate, but never mind. Um, now there are three points when I cried in this, three specific points. Um, so the first time, I cr and I mean proper crying, not just like, oh, sniff, that's sad. I mean proper reduced to tears. The first one was when um, Madge was looking at the image and it was showing her husband just before he apparently died. That that got me crying. Um, the second time was when they realised he wasn't dead and he was still alive. I told you this would have contained spoilers, so if you didn't listen to that at the beginning, not my problem. Um, so that really made me cry then when they realised he wasn't dead. And the third time was when the Doctor had a very small tear when he went to Amy and Rory. And it was at that point... I'm welling up again. It was at that point when I realised that without a doubt, even though Rose is my all-time favourite companion, without a doubt my... Um, the, the best friends, the Doctor's best friends ever are Amy and Rory. They're the most loyal, they're the nicest, they're they're not clingy, but at the same time you can tell they love him. They're oh, they're just the doctor's best friends he's ever had, without a doubt. And it's hard for me to admit that, considering Rose is my all-time favorite, and I would love you know she has her own doctor now. But it, it, it's a lot to say for me, for a lot for me to admit, because my my loyalty is with Rose. But Amy and Rory are without a doubt the doctor's best friends ever, and it's it's phenomenal. What they bring to his life is fantastic, and. I'm annoyed still that they're leaving halfway through series 7, that really has annoyed me quite a lot. They're irreplaceable and Doctor Who's going to end after the 13th, the 13th, 2013, 15th anniversary. I, I've said that from the beginning, well not from the beginning of Doctor Who obviously, but from, like from the announcement of the 50th anniversary special, Doctor Who will end after that. And I hope it does because I'm, I don't want it to sort of fizzle out, I want it to end on a high. Um, I will miss it, but I'll get my life back because once it's on, once the series are on, I'm kind of like glued every Saturday evening. So like, I kind of do wish it would end soon just so I can get my life back. Um, yeah. Also, Holly Earl is in this. She played Lily. Um, she was in Casualty. I just like to point out that she is the same age as me. Well, she's five months younger, but 1992, and she is the same height as me as well. So it was really nice to be able to look and first of all to find somebody else who was my age and height is lovely. And then to look at her and think, that's what I'd look like standing next to the Doctor. He's a bit tall. <laughs> but yeah, um, so this episode, if I, I never give episodes marks out of ten, but if I were, I'd say you know, four for the first half and six or seven for the second half. It doesn't have fear factor, it doesn't really have much of a plot that's gripping, but it has emotions, so I have to give it some credit, I guess. Um, but let me know your thought. It's definitely... Out of all the Doctor Who Christmas episodes, okay, the, the, the video review's over, I'm going to do this bit now. Out of all the Doctor Who Christmas episodes, if I had to put them in order of preference, I have to first remember them all. Um, first of all, let's see, the Christmas Invasion. It was six years yesterday since the first day I ever saw Doctor Who. That's a very, that, to me that's what Christmas Day is all about, celebrating my Doctor Who anniversary. Um, so, the Christmas Invasion, it's number one. Then, um, the, the, oh goodness, the David's part one thingy. I, don't, I can't remember the name of these episodes, my, name's, my, my memory isn't good. The 2008 one, and then I, 2009, 8, oh goodness, see I'm appalling with these. Anyway, The Christmas Invasion, David's part one of the finale, is it the end of time? I think it is. And um, then I'd have to say The Christmas Carol, A Christmas Carol, and then I'd say The Runaway Bride, and then, hmm, The Next Doctor, The Voyage of the Damned, and this one. How have I just got seven? Oh, whatever. Um, let me know your thoughts um, and also rank them in order and I will put in order in the below bar my favourite six or seven. My memory is horrendous. Um, but yeah, so this was alright. It's not as if I'd say don't watch it because it is good, but it's a bit disappointing for being a special Christmas episode. It's lacking. Um, yeah, but let me know your thoughts. That's it for just now. You'll be pleased to know and I'll see you all next time. Bye!